In this video, I'm going to share six tips with you that you can use to heavily speed up your process when it comes to designing t-shirts in Adobe Illustrator. So the first tip I've got for you is actually related to how you create a new document in Adobe Illustrator, because in case you've never noticed, over here where you select your pixels, uh, your dimensions for the artboard, you can actually increase this to have say 20 artboards of that exact size instead. One way to take that even further is to click on more settings right here and then you can specify how much spacing is in between all of the artboards in this column right here and you can also select in um, what sort of configuration it will be so how many columns it will be in this will make it five columns and four rows because we've got 20 artboards these settings are really handy if you want to create a lot of designs for one niche and then essentially export them all together in bulk after so i'll show you what that looks like if we hit create document and as you can see we've got all of our artboards set up next to one another. Now this is half the size of the Merge by Amazon dimensions just because the uh, space in the Illustrator document is quite quickly filled up if you use 4,500 by 5,400. Let's say you filled all of these artboards out with uh, actual designs. And this is also quite handy to kind of motivate you to create more designs for one niche because you kind of want to fill out all of these empty ones, let's say once you've got halfway down and it's sort of pushes you to be more creative and come up with more ideas. Once you've done this and filled all of these out, another thing you can do is go over to artboards right here. And uh, if you don't see that option in your side panel, you can go over to window and just tick artboards right there. And you could select all of these. So click on the first artboard, hold down shift on your keyboard and then click on the last one Then head over to the menu icon right here click artboard options and you've now got the choice to create a new name for these so let's say you've created fishing designs you could name this fishing then hit ok and all of these artboards are renamed to fishing just to sort of help you out with the names of your files right there um, you could do that and to now export all of these designs in bulk once you're done with them you could head over to file export export for screens then you want to select all of the artboards in here where it says scale you need to change this to height and change the pixel amount to 5400 and if you now export this to your desired folder all artboards all designs will be put out in this pixel dimension very quickly you can also rearrange your artboards if you wanted to by heading over to the menu once again click rearrange all artboards and let's say you're not happy with how many columns we've got or the spacing in between then uh, you can change that right here increase the spacing and click ok and as you can see it's completely changed the layout without us having to actually move these around individually so this next tip can save you a lot of time when it comes to creating more intricate designs in Adobe Illustrator. I quite like to use it for rainbow type designs, but you can use it in many other scenarios as well. So we've got basically a part of circle right here, which is just a stroke. And at the bottom, there's two silhouettes of a dog. And you can do this with any sort of objects, any silhouettes, and also any stroke. It could be a line, circle, and you can try out anything. What you need to do is select both of your silhouettes at the bottom, and then head up to object blend make yours might not look like this um, you might have like a complete line right here of dogs and very smooth and if it doesn't look right then head back to blend blend options and you're going to have to change this to specified steps and then you can turn the amount of steps up and down until you get it looking somewhat like this where there's a bit of space in between each object as you can see this already has helped you quite well with creating a nice color scheme so the fade from pink to purple you can use the blend tool just to find out nice new gradient color transitions if you wanted to but what we're going to do is now select both of these the blend and the sort of art or circle and then head over to object blend and click replace spine this time and as you can see that's going to place our blend onto this stroke onto this line which looks really nice and could be the starting point of a design or part of the rainbow and you can do this with as i said many many different shapes and be really creative with it and save a ton of time because you could do this manually by just arranging dogs around a circle or you could use the blend tool and do it very quickly and automatically 
For tip number three, I've got a few hints that are all around typography. These are quite simple, but in the long run, they can definitely save you a ton of time and sort of tedious, repetitive processes. So if you select your text and want to size it up or down, then you can usually click and it goes down one point at a time. If you hold down shift, however, while clicking, it's going to go down in 10 point increments. So that's already going to speed up your process a lot. And then if you just hold your left mouse button down, it's going to do that extremely fast while holding down shift by the way if, if you don't hold down shift it's still pretty slow and this works for other sections as well for example the character window if you want to adjust the tracking hold down shift and just click and then it's going to do that way quicker than usual and one really useful thing you can do with your fonts if you really like them and you want to use them more often just select them, head over to the font selector and then save it as a favorite. And then if you click the little star symbol up here, it only shows you the favorite fonts, which is really handy to have them there and not always have to scroll through and search forever. And another quick little tip right here is, um, let's say I, I like this font, but I want to use a different but similar one for once. So I want one with a nice texture, but I'm a bit bored of this particular font. So in that instance, you could once again, come up to the font family selector and click show similar fonts. What that's going to do is suggest a lot of fonts in your library that you have installed that have a similar style and theme. So as you can see, there's quite a few nice ones here with texture effects um, applied as well that do look relatively similar and I would also use in the same kind of design. So that's a quick tip once again to save time rather than scrolling through your fonts forever trying to find the right one. You can just look for similar fonts, click back if you want to get to your old list and uh, hope that tip saves you a lot of time in the future as well. Moving on, we've got another great time-saving feature which I use all the time while designing, and that is to recolor your artwork um, with the recolor function. Um, if you want to turn this from purple to blue, rather than using the eyedropper and sort of doing a very tedious job coloring those pieces in individually, you can just select the entire rainbow or your entire artwork, um, whatever you have, and then head up to this little symbol right here, click that, and then you have a few options right here. You can either untick the uh, color harmony right here then it's not linked and you can move these around individually let's say I wanted this green then I can move the purple colors over to the green section and as you can see that's changed that very quickly but you could also if you wanted to if you just take this back head to advanced options edit you can see right here these are now linked if we have this symbol if you tick it, it's unlinked again, but we want it linked in this case. You can just change the H slider, which is the hue, quickly apply a different color scheme. All of the different colors change at the same time. Now, this takes a bit of practice. Not every setting is going to look good. You can also turn the um, saturation up or down right here if you wanted to, and the brightness as well at the bottom. So play around with this, use it for your existing designs to quickly create new color variations of them or to quickly change a color if you want to. If you're not happy with one of your colors, you can just quickly move around some of these sliders and then apply a new one for the entire design rather than having to recolor your artwork very tediously. With that little trick I just showed you, you could, for example, create a lot of rainbows like these ones right here that I created in the past very quickly you just need one template and then you can bulk recolor them very easily uh, this is a bundle of rainbows that is actually available in my store which um, is always linked down below in the description by the way in case you're curious but i just wanted to show it to you so you can see how to actually apply that recolor artwork function this next tip is really handy for creating designs with texture overlays so instead of doing this one by one there's a trick in illustrator of how to apply texture to multiple designs in one go. So what you will need is a texture file in SVG format. So this is not a PNG, and as you can see, they're actual vector paths. And um, what you then want to do is overlay it onto your artboard, change the color to something which doesn't exist in any of your designs, like this ugly lime color right here, which is definitely not present in any of my sunset designs right here. And then all you have to do is basically copy or duplicate this texture over onto all all of the other artboards and let's do this quickly for the other rows as well so drag them down while holding down alt and shift until they're placed above the artboards and then you can click ctrl d 
to duplicate the process. And now all you have to do is select all of these in one go, the textures and the designs or the sunsets in my case. And this is going to be quite a heavy task because we're um, sort of doing this for a lot of designs at once. But if we head over to Pathfinder, which once again, if you don't know where the Pathfinder is, head up to Window and tick Pathfinder right here. And then we want to click the Divide option. Click on that option. It might take a little while for it to uh, process and apply the Divide filter. Uh, the screen goes black sometimes as well. So depending on your PC speed, this might take like 10 seconds up to a minute. And obviously, also depending on how many designs you selected. If you selected 100, it might take a few minutes instead of one. But once it's done, it will still look the same. And you might think, why did we do that? And the reason is, if we now zoom in and select one of these lime green pieces and head up to select same fill and stroke and then click delete on your keyboard, you can now see that the texture has applied to all of the designs and it's cut out from the background. Now, one last step that you would want to take is just hit Control Y on your keyboard. As you can see, there is still some scattered pieces right here left over from our divide function. These, just select some of them, hit Control Y again. These are actually invisible, so they have no fill, no stroke color. So once again, we want to head up to select, same, fill in stroke, and hit delete on your keyboard and now everything is clear no more pieces left over on the artboards and if we now draw one of these sunsets over um, then we can see the background color shines through so uh, i think it's about 30 sunsets which we've gotten a texture right there in just a couple of minutes time for tip number six, you're going to need the actions panel, which in case you can't find it anywhere on your sidebar, um, is hidden in the window section up here. If you click actions, the actions panel is extremely useful because it can save you a ton of time by automating processes that you have to do over and over again. So for example, this design right here, if uh, we wanted to center it on our artboard right now, we'd have to click horizontal line center and vertically align center. And that's probably a process that you've done a million times in the past if you use Illustrator. And instead of always doing that same process, you could just head over to the actions panel, click create a new action, which is the plus symbol down here, then call this action align to center or align center. And you want to apply a function key. So let's say um, we use F seven just as an example you could also add shift or control to that um, to customize the, the buttons on your keyboard which will enable this function to be played automatically then you want to click record and do the same process again so i have these designs selected and click horizontally line to center and vertically align to center as you can see it's recorded those two actions right there and if you now click stop then the action is saved for the future and if you ever have the same sort of scenario you can just hit f7 on your keyboard and it will instantly repeat those actions and align your design to the center which is really really handy i mean in that case it maybe only saves you like two or three seconds yes it adds up over time but you can do that for any other task which you find yourself doing over and over again and there's some like preset ones up here as well that you can use and one really cool way to use the actions panel to save hundreds and hundreds of of hours is to combine it with um, if we go to window with the variables panel because you can actually import variables meaning lots of different words and have them swapped out on your design with an action now that is a topic in and of itself which would take like 10 minutes to explain so i'm not going to do that in this video but i have made multiple videos in the past that i recommend you check out if you want to learn how to scale out designs and create them in bulk with these two panels it's trust me it'll be worth it it will save you so much time in the future and enable you to create hundreds of designs every single day so that's it for this tip actions panel really useful and definitely worth setting up to save you time in the future and a quick little bonus tip this is one that i've mentioned before in my videos but if you're new to the channel you might not know of this and i think it can save you a ton of time because if you create designs for dark t-shirts meaning well text that is white or, or light in color, then you probably always find it annoying that you have to use a box. At least this is what I used to do. You have to use a box with a black fill and sort of drag it 
across your artboard, then push it through the back and lock it. Then you can create your designs with white text, etc. But then if you want to unlock some of the items of your design, then this box also becomes unlocked again and it makes it really hard to move stuff around without moving the background. So there's a lot of really annoying parts of, of doing it this way. And because of that, there's actually a way easier option to go about this. So rather than using a rectangle and uh, placing it on your artboard, you can just head over to File, Document Setup, click Simulate Colored Paper and change this white box to black. And then if you click OK, then your artboard has got a default color of black. Obviously, you could use other colors rather than selecting black, but this is extremely handy because now you don't have to constantly fiddle around with a rectangle behind all of your design elements, and which is really handy. It saved me a ton of time in the past, and I hope if the tip is new to you, it can also make your design process a lot easier. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And if you want to increase the likelihood of getting sales with your t-shirt designs, then make sure Sure to check out this video next where I show you nine different Adobe Illustrator tools that will help you create better shirts.